Oh. There's my USB cable. In this video, I am going to recreate Dune the way it was meant to be. And don't get me wrong, the recent Dune movies are phenomenal and I 100% back Dennis Villeneuve's vision of bringing Dune to life in this unique aesthetic. However, the books made some different choices with how the characters were presented, so we're gonna bring Frank Herbert's original vision to life and compare. Starting off with Fade Ralpha Harkonnen, a very intimidating antagonist, but quite different to how he looks in the book. Now, Fade Ralpha Harkonnen in the book is a 16 year old boy with dark hair in ringlets. That's right, this whole bald thing of the Harkonnen, not a thing in the book. It's a choice that Dennis Villeneuve made for the movies to sort of reflect the toxic environment of the planet that they come from. And again, I love that, like it works really well. But Fade Ralpha Harkonnen has a head of dark hair with ringlets. He's described as having a round face with sullen eyes and full pouting lips. Which, I gotta be honest, I think, I mean, Austin Butler was perfect for that bit. He's a very pouty man. However, the way the character's described is closer to Austin Butler's Elvis than his Fade Ralpha. Finally, he's described as thin, but strong with thick shoulders, and of course, as evil a face as I ever saw, according to one observer. I gotta be honest, I wasn't really feeling confident in how this was developing. I'd gone straight to colors thinking I'd go for a more painted aesthetic, and because I wasn't super confident with it, I thought I'd try and backtrack and lean more in a direction where I am confident. More of a comic book line art style. But I've never done line art second. I always do colour after the line art and going back and doing line art on top just wasn't working and it just got to a stage where I pulled the plug. I don't always make stuff I'm proud of, but I also think it's important for you to see that every artist is an artist and that comes with the twos and fro's and the ups and downs of making art and sometimes you look at it and you think, what the hell did I just make? So, I, I don't, I'm just, I'm not in a digital art place today, I think. I'm switching gears. I need to distance myself from whatever the hell that was. <laughs> I think it's time to go old school with some ancient paper and charcoal. I mean, not only did I dislike the result that I had, but he looked older than Austin Butler. Let's put it that way. But this time, loosening myself up and relaxing into just trying to bring some of those prompts to life on the paper and experimenting with different ways that his hair could be dark and in ringlets and just sort of feeling my way through until I found something that felt right for this character, which upon my fifth drawing and hairstyle and pouty lips, I actually felt like I was onto something I could work with and moved on to a refined illustration. I was feeling much, much, much better about this direction. Not only switching gears into a medium that, I mean, I could relax into a bit, I think I, it helps me warm up a little bit more, but I was also able to gradually work towards the elements that I felt would look good, and then having tested it, put it together in a final concept that I feel works much better. So it's time to slap in a little bit of colour to bring Fade Ralpha Harkonnen to life, or at least as closely as is described in the books as I can. I feel much, much better about this. And there's also something satisfying about having it in your hand as well. I feel, I feel like I've really traumatized myself with the, the, I love digital art. And I've done so many videos with digital art. I just really threw myself. I'm just being super self-critical. I mean, there's probably people watching this who thought it wasn't all that bad. I need to go easy on myself. But switching gears was a good move and I'm feeling really, really good about this direction. And this is my fade router. What do you reckon? Very different to the Austin Butler in the movie, but he is a 16 year old boy with dark locks of hair. And as you can see, I've gone with these almost fully black eyes, which aren't described that way, but because his eyes are sullen and sunken. So next in the firing line is Chani. Chani's one of our female protagonists in the first two movies that we've seen so far, played by Zendaya. In the book, she's described as a young woman with completely dark blue eyes with no white in them at all. And she has long, red hair with a very thin elfin face, wearing robes and a still suit covering her entire body except face and hands. Now already that paints a different picture. Zendaya has a little bit of a shorter sort of face, whereas in the book Chani has a really long elfin, very thin face with long red hair. So I'm really leaning into this more elfin aesthetic and after my experiments have a bit of a direction I'm reasonably happy with, but I want it to feel a little bit wilder. So as I move on to a more refined illustration, I add a little bit of motion in the hair and the wind, like she's standing in the desert plains amongst a sandstorm. 
I'm also adding in that nose plug, which they use to sort of keep the water from their breath and attaching it, of course, to her still suit, which is what they also keep to retain all of the water in their body. And then it's on to bring it all together with color, focusing in particular on the red hair and the blue eyes. Very different to what was portrayed in the movie. Again, the movies work so well. Both the current ones and the uh, the 80s ones. If you haven't seen those, they are just a moment in time. But as best as I can, this is my envisioning of Cheney from the books as described by Frank Herbert. It can be really fun to stick to a design prompt and get to an outcome that you're really happy with that actually honors the approach that you're taking. Of seeing characters be developed, of having prompts and having outcomes that look really cool, and you want to know how to do that stuff yourself, I've created a whole character design masterclass, taking you through the four steps that you need to follow to get the results that you want every time. Character design is so fun, I've been doing it for decades and I'm absolutely in love with it and love sharing that passion with you. It's a huge resource with loads of help and loads of my experience put in there to help you on your character design journey and to help you take it even further, I've also launched a little competition where in the first module of the class, you can download the competition instructions for your chance to win hundreds of dollars of prizes, including a hangout with me where I take you through a personal one-on-one -on -one drawing session. So go check it out, Character Design Masterclass on the jazzstudios.com shop. It's a direct support to me and the channel and it's a really fun, high quality, great course you're gonna love with a great competition you can participate in too to give yourself the opportunity to challenge yourself and see how far you can push yourself but also have a bit of fun and maybe you have the chance to win something. Go check it out with the link in the description. Now they're two of the characters that you know and you've seen and it's in all their promo material and they look quite different. That's no huge surprise. But we are gonna now move into spoiler territory. But when I say spoiler territory, I mean like weird far future way later books territory that probably will never get made into movies that they're just so damn weird. Anyone who's read those books knows who I'm referring to now. I am going to try and depict two versions of Emperor Leto II. These are much, much later in the Dune series. And again, I think it's probably unlikely they're gonna be made into films, but if they are, this will be decades in the future. So don't worry too much about spoilers unless you really don't want this ruined for you. But we're gonna start off with the early depiction of Leto II, the young boy who becomes Emperor, the son of Paul Atreides. So Leto is a little boy with psychic visions of the future and he decides to embrace the visions and become a dictator who will rule for thousands of years. To do this, he has to overdose on spice and merge with a sandworm. So I'm going to depict him at his earlier stage of becoming this weird version of Leto II, a 10-year-old boy who's also small for his age. So we're thinking a small, skinny, young boy who is psychic. He can see both past and future, but he's massively overdosed on spice. So he's completely blue eyes with no whites and he goes out into the desert of Dune and covers himself with sand trouts. They're like baby sandworms. They're just like single celled organisms. They're diamond shaped and they lock together underground and can combine to form sandworms. And there's the scene of transformation where the book describes how these sand trout merge with his body. But basically it sort of becomes an exoskeleton in this early stage of his evolution where he becomes much stronger and faster. He can jump 15 meters of the air and has super speed. And Witnesses says he looks like a demon in the shape of a boy. So I'm drawing a 10 year old with a sandworm exoskeleton that looks a bit demonic with blue eyes. Now this is just the very early portrayal of Leto II, but he's most known for his final form as the many thousands years old giant sandworm emperor, which we'll get to in a moment, but I actually wanted to continue this evolution and sort of find a halfway point. Now we'll get to the mature Leto II Atreides in a second, but I really just wanted to try and envision what he looks like halfway to becoming a sandworm, which is why in his younger form, as you can see, 
Gandalf sort of alluded to a tail sort of coming out from his spine elongating perhaps. And this version that I'm drawing next to and behind him, as you can see, that's sort of expanded and becoming this worm-like body. And he's requiring the use of his legs less because the bigger it becomes, the more he can just move around on this worm body. And I've used the descriptions that I'll be anchoring to later to sort of find the direction that his body will be forming towards. Which is why I've gone for this sort of sandworm cowl as a hood or opening which his head comes out of. And all in all this form is pretty terrifying but it also I think is pretty accurate in terms of what it would look like halfway between his two states. As a young humanoid boy with an exoskeleton and a later monstrosity. The mature Leto II is 3,000 years is old. He grows to be very ancient and is worshipped by everyone as the God Emperor. Described as a smallish sandworm, and I guess that's described that way because the sandworms are freaking huge, with a human-like face and arms. His face is cowled, maybe in the mouth of that worm body, almost lost in the immensity. He's seven meters long and two meters in diameter, which is why w with my sketch here I'm trying to figure the proportion portions out because he's also described with a face at man height, which I interpret it as being well, he's mostly on his worm body. So with two meters diameter of his body, if his head's halfway in the middle of that, well then with his head raised up, that could make sense that his head is at the height of a full grown person, but basically because he's laying down on his tummy. He's got a ribbed body, he weighs five tons or about as much as an elephant, with human-like arms and hands emerging just below the face but his feet and legs have withered to like flippers with one shorter than the other because obviously he doesn't need those legs anymore. I'm pretty confident with the proportions that I've laid out here so I'm going to move on to a final refined sketch of Leto II Atreides as horrifying as he is and put ourselves in the perspective of someone kneeling before the god emperor horrified at this monstrosity looming before him. Now it described his diameter as two meters, but I've narrowed that down towards the head. So I wanted to fill two meters in diameter shortly behind the head area, but it sort of tapers in to the front of what I guess is this small sandworm body. But I really wanted to capture this colossal size. So aside from having someone in the foreground bowing to the God Emperor, as you can see, I've put a guard off in the distance closer to the midriff of his seven meter long body, which now given that context, as you can see, looks pretty massive. He's thicker than people are tall and I imagine he moves and it's not all just flat and a predictable size. Hence him raising himself up a little bit in this piece. Now onto colour, he's described as having pink skin on a human face with arms covered with grey sand trout skin. So I'm interpreting his arms to being outside of the inner sandworm mouthish area, which is also the cowl of the emperor's head. And I've positioned the teeth to sort of feel a little bit like a necklace and also a bit like a crown. And then on to colouring the rest of the body. He's described as having a silver grey body and with grey sand trout skin on his arms. So I focus and all the greys throughout the Emperor to start off with, blend all that in and work on the shadows and then I come back with a bit of blue on the top areas to give that silvery look and a bit of pink on the belly to make it a bit fleshy. Last but not least, a little bit of colour to our bowing commander in the foreground to bring our piece together. So there we have it. We have characters from the movies that look quite different than they were described as in the books. And then we have the later books, which as you can see, get extremely weird. But I have to say, I would love if the movies get this far to see how this is interpreted. It is also fun to see how other people have interpreted Leto II Atreides, which I'll scroll across the screen here. As you can see, it sort of comes in all different flavors. Some really vanilla looking weird worm bodies with just sort of a head on top and some that go more stylistic in their interpretation. Don't stick exactly to the books, but honestly, I think look cooler anyways. I hope you've enjoyed the outcome of my process here today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. That's it for now and until next time, 
I'll see you later.